the jagged edge of Cornwall jabs defiantly into the Atlantic. Only the most durable rock can resist that ocean's pounding. This tough coastline doesn't give up its treasures easily. But from the earliest times, men have been drawn here to pit themselves against the granite. Hidden inside the rock is a magical ingredient that brought the world to the Cornish coast. They came in search of a rare metal with remarkable properties, tin. The relics of tin mining can be seen along the north coast of Cornwall. The engine houses and their chimneys may be derelict, but these ruins are reminders of an industry that connects us directly to the ancient world, thanks to a humble household object. How about this? A tin. Nowadays, though, you'd probably call it a can made of aluminium or steel. But the originals started out in the 1800s and were made of iron. Iron coated with a thin layer of tin. Tin doesn't rust. It's one of its many magical properties. And food kept in rust-free tin cans remained edible for ages. But ages and ages ago, tin was at the cutting edge of a much bigger revolution. Mix tin with copper and you get bronze. The birth of the Bronze Age, some three and a half thousand years ago, owed a lot to the tin of the Cornish coast. Archaeologist Adam Sharp has studied ancient bronze tools. An axe head, this is the sort of staple working tool of the Bronze Age. Virtually every piece of bronze that you find in, in Western Europe has got Cornish tin in it. Once people the world over realise that tin is to be had here, Cornwall becomes pivotal. Absolutely. In terms of distribution on the Earth's surface, tin is, is very rare indeed. Even in, in terms of sort of Western Europe, um, there's a bit in Iberia, in Spain, um, there's a little bit on Sardinia, but almost all of it is in Cornwall and West Devon. And it means that the people who controlled that resource traded all over Western Europe. Thousands of years ago, long and perilous journeys were being made to this coast. As the Bronze Age boomed in Europe, they needed Cornish tin. The tin trade wasn't just with near neighbours across the Severn Sea, but with the wider world. Tin was travelling as far away as ancient Greece and the Middle East. Bronze Age traders took great risks navigating this treacherous coastline, but the rewards were worth it. The copper tool, it blunts very, very easily. It's too bendy. Adding just the right amount of tin, 10, 11% of tin, makes it hard, makes it tough, it's sharpenable, it can be polished. What in the main is bronze being used to make? Utilitarian tools, axes and knives and chisels and things like that. Enormous range of jewellery and weapons, of course. And it's the making of swords, which is absolutely typifies the, bron the later brought part of the Bronze Age. So in a way, that puts Cornwall at the centre of an international arms trade. I'm afraid so, <laughs> yes. Throughout the Bronze Age, ancient armies relied on the Cornish coast for the raw materials of battle. Hiya, Neil. Hello. To see why, I'm meeting Neil Burridge, who still practises the age-old art of forging bronze weapons. Just got the fire going to start to warm up. As the temperature rises, Neil prepares a mould made of stone so we can cast our own bronze sword. That's it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. Inside the fire is a crucible containing the two metals that together form bronze. 90% copper will make our sword flexible. 10% tin will make it hard with a cutting edge. Like Heated that. to 1,200 degrees Lovely. Celsius, we're ready to pour. That's good. Wow. Oh, look at that. Wow, even that's a beautiful thing. Let's get the colour of it. My first sword. What I'm going to do is take the clamps off it now. If we try to move it too quickly, it a snap. Right. And if we leave it too long in the mould, it gets stuck in the mould and it won't come out, so it's a bit like Excalibur, really. So oh, it sure do, is. I'm going to give it a little wiggle. I can feel it. So you should be able to draw it out very slowly, but don't 
drop it. That's how you draw a sword from a stone. The metal merchants have moved on in search of cheaper tin.